what exactly falls within the scope of artificial intelligence? Yeah. And what would you consider to be outside of the scope of what you would invest in? Yeah, that's an interesting question because um, I think we, we had that a lot when we first launched the funds. Obviously, AI is a bit of a buzzword. Like, um, uh, you know, everyone always wants to talk about it. Everyone thinks they're, they're using it. Um, and when we first launched the, the fund, we probably got about, you know, double the amount of deal flow we, we, we have done in previous years. And it's because we had a lot of companies that are applying to us with AI kind of slapped on their investment deck, but they weren't actually using the, the machine learn, learning models we would expect in order to invest. Um, so I think the differentiator for us is uh, a few things. I think the, one of the biggest one is, is, is there a data set that they are using to allow the, 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 the machine learning to learn, basically? Because um, I think for us, a big a core part of it is we believe that data is, is key. Uh, to provide this learning and also to, to train your system. Um, so, yeah, so uh, you mentioned uh, earlier about the robotics, like robotics is, is great if there is a data system, but if it's a closed loop, then it, it probably wouldn't be as much for us. Uh, although there can be exceptions. I see, um, so key focus is really to make sure that the company has access to some kind of a data set that so, they can apply some of their technologies to, to be able to yeah. create value. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they don't have to have access like they don't have to have access before we invest. They just need to have a plan to acquire it, right? Because um, sometimes uh, access to data costs money, or you know you need to have the right connections. Um, so we would help them, you know, create like a data strategy almost. Uh, and then when it comes to the tooling, so like uh, we, we do a lot of investments in you know natural language processing, so extracting um, you know information from documents or unstructured invoices. Um, we do a lot of machine vision, especially when it comes to medtech companies. So, um, you know, detecting um, deep in the process in your leg. We've got a company called ThinkSono doing that. Um, and then we, yeah, and then we, we, we wouldn't do, for example, uh, companies that are using, um, you know, decision trees. Because we don't believe that is, you know, actual, like, it is machine learning, right? It's just very, very black and white. You either do this or that. Um, and that's the tech that we've been using for the last 30, 40 years. So I think for us, it has to be quite revolutionary um, in order to us get to, to get excited. I see. So for that, it seems like you have to look fairly deeply at the, the methodologies and the technologies that the companies are using. Yeah. Um, how do you approach this process of assessing whether or not a particular technology is revolutionary or can have a big impact in the future, or if it's something that a competing large tech giant might be able to easily create or is maybe already available in some form from open yeah. source uh, libraries. How do you make this uh, this evaluation? Yeah, it's tough, to be honest. Um, I think that's that's one part that, that we really differentiate ourselves, differentiate ourselves between other funds. Uh, and that's why um, I think we've done pretty well to, to capture these early uh, strong AI companies. Um, and I think what we do is we do our own in-house technology uh, due diligence. Uh, so one of our partners, uh, Thomas Stone, is a uh, is our technical partner. So he previously uh, built it, built up his company and, and sold it to Salesforce uh, a few years back as one of the early kind of you know AI acquisitions. Um, and because of that, he's had the experience from being an entrepreneur and also <clears throat> from his PhD to basically assess these startups. Um, and obviously, we we, we try to do is uh, a technical deep dive. We we wouldn't go in, in as deep as to you know go through the source code and stuff like that, but it's more looking at you know the tools they're using, uh, the, the the technical roadmap, how how long it, they they believe it will take them to build it out, and what features they're going to build out, the data set they have, and also we we also look at the competition as well. So who is in the space, whether it's um, a larger tech organization that could could do it themselves, but then also looking at like a larger organization such as Google may do it themselves, but would they commercialize it right? Um, we saw a really good company a few years back, which were building out basically what Google has internally for their for their server capacity, but um, you know Google don't wouldn't, wouldn't productize it. So there's quite there's quite a few interesting ones there. Um, but I think the, the key thing for us is if we can validate the tech and validate the the team who are building the tech, we believe they've got a very good chance to succeed and develop the, their their technology.